fermenting fiber is what our bacteria have been doing for millions of years. They don't know about Orange Theory and CrossFit and uh, supersets and uh, apple cider vinegar, you know. This is Dental All-Stars, where we bring you the best in dentistry on marketing, management, and training. Here's your host, Alex Nottingham. Welcome to Dental All-Stars. We got Dr. Uchi Odiatu, and he is the author of The Miracle of Health, and he's also an NC, NSCA certified personal trainer, professional member of the American College of Sports Medicine. He's given 600 lectures in seven countries since 2015 on all aspects of integrating wellness and nutrition into the chairside conversation. He's obviously a dentist, or maybe not obviously, but many people know him. He is a dentist. So happy to have you, Dr. Uchi. Hey, always a pleasure. Love sharing. I'm I'm ready to rock. So and we had some time in the green room uh, talking about uh, some of my own personal requests and 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 advice from the, the guru here in dentistry and and health. And we're going to talk about the human microbiome. What every dental pro needs to know. I know you're really passionate about that. So tell me tell me about the microbiome. How you got interested in it and that journey. Yeah, it, it, it's it's powerful only because it's so primordial. I, I think everyone jumps into which supplement to take, uh, protein shake. Do I need L, L arginine? Uh, how about Orange Theory? And I'm like, okay, what was on the planet first five billion years ago? Nothing. And then for a billion years there was no life. And then four billion years ago, single-celled organisms. And I know sometimes, uh, sometimes in some audiences, I got to apologize for different theories of creation. But uh, anthropologists and scientists have talked about the first life form on the planet was single-celled organisms. So bacteria have been on the planet for 4 billion years. That being said, um, those same bacteria have morphed to, but it took 800 million years for them to go from one cell to two cells. So th these little two-celled um, living organisms and they evolved into every other life form. So the neat thing is though, they actually inhabit our bodies. Um, we have 42 trillion single-celled organisms in both of us, and many of them are on the planet for billions of years. So that being said, they don't know anything about L-arginine and uh, protein shakes and uh, gluten-free bread. What they do want though is, is fiber, because um, back before uh, humanity invented fire, we spent about, uh, so five, six million years ago, our, our human ancestors, Homo habilis and uh, that little Lucy from three point three and a half million years ago, they ate uh, weeds and shrubs and plants all day. They spent a good 19 hours a day eating raw plants. And it wasn't until uh, we started developing fire that we were able to cook it. And what happened was the intestine shrank and the brain grew. But our bacteria has spent millions of years um, fermenting fiber. That's all we had. So that being said, when people talk to me about Uch, what's the limiting factor in most people and, you know, Uch, why is your skin smooth or why don't you pop, you know, ibuprofen every day like the rest of us? I'm like, because um, our bacteria ferment fiber and they've been, they've been doing that for millions of years. And they, back in the caveman, cavewoman days, they had about 100 grams a day. Nowadays, average North American has 12 grams a day. So the average person, all things held equal, are starving they're single cell organisms of the one thing they want, which is fiber. So I've, I've, everything I've read, and I've read all the current books on the human microbiome and the human, uh, the microbiome, the biota, um, on, only 5% of people eat the required amount of fiber. So you could even not even understand about the biome, but if we listen to our mothers and grandmothers or wives or mothers and great grandmothers, they just said, eat your vegetables. So now we know sure. the science, like Harvard's come into it, the National Institute of Health. Uh, most people aren't eating, eating a fiber. So that's my foundation. Like, uh, and, and if that's all anyone took away, that's, that's something they do. Everyone needs to eat more plants, uh, raw or cooked. You know, I think as, as dentists and dental professionals, we overthink it. But uh, fermenting fiber is what our bacteria have been doing for millions of years. They don't know about Orange Theory and CrossFit and uh, supersets and uh, apple cider vinegar, you know? Oh, that's crazy. Fiber. Fibers, their jam. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm sure you've heard this numerous times, but we're more bacteria than we are human cells. We have more bacteria in our body than we do human cells. 
Yeah, so yeah, it's they and they don't have a brain, but they have a consciousness. Like think wow. of it that way. They don't have a brain. So we have this, you know, you know, we have multiple degrees, postgrad programs, you read books, we write, we listen. Bacteria don't have a brain, but if you starve them of fiber, guess what? They will make you have mental fog, brain yeah, fog, and they, and, slow down and your metabolism. Isn't it part of our hunger comes from the bacteria, isn't that true? Or I heard? Well, well anytime they're not getting what they want, um, they will have you keep searching for food. They'll mm. have you keep putting food down your face. And, and they don't have eyes, they don't know how to drive you know, a Corvette, wow. Maserati. I'm not sure what you drive, Alex, but probably a nice car. Then yeah. all they can do is make you want to eat. They don't know about the golden arches. They don't know about uh, any fast food addiction. What they do know is though, please keep sending down food into your mouth. And if you keep sending down processed junk food, uh, too much meat with, with no fiber, they will keep you searching. The minute you have an avocado though, the bacteria go, hey, you know, they sit back like Al Bundy, you know, hand in their pants going, uh, that I'm was happy. Tasty. You have an avocado, <laughs> it cuts your appetite. You, I've really? never had it. I don't know anyone that's eaten three apples at only 450 calories. Um, all of a sudden, your biome's happy. So, one easy way to, to stop cravings and have a flat stomach, eat more fiber. It's like it's cheap, it's free, it's uh, a no brainer. Hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, tell us about the impact on our health by not having, as you're saying, like with the microbiome, we, we got to eat fiber. That's your message. Uh, and so I want to hear the impact on health, and, and i like you to also get to about supplementation. Do we take probiotics? Do we get it from yogurt? Is that helpful too? Because you have the, the, the bacteria, the, the microbiome itself, but then you also have its food source, the, the prebiotics, which are the fiber. So tell right. us about that. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And again, this is not my research. I, I've just read seven books on it so oh there's only um, seven books i read a few there's articles only seven books. so I, I saw something on, i stayed on at a holiday Inn express so i'm an expert go ahead so if you if you spend a hundred hours mm -hmm. just studying one subject you know more than 95 percent of people in the world in your subject 95 percent of people so you read seven books i'm a top five percent microbiome guru and none mm -hmm. of it's my research i just read uh papers i've read stuff from the national institute of health I know the first uh, human microbiome uh, project was completed in 2012 in Bethesda, Maryland. They've done two more phases. They've now chronicled, there's about up to 20,000 species of bacteria in your, my body. And Rob Knight, the founder of the American Gut Project, has shown, this is where it gets kind of cool. He was the keynote speaker at the gastroenterology, the annual national meeting of gastroenterologists. So when you think of human microbiome, think of gastroenterologists. So this microbiologist, Rob Knight, who was the founder of the American Gut Project, had a one hour keynote. So this guy's been studying the biome, he's chronicled, he's sampled and micro essayed Americans poop for the last uh, you know 10 years. And what they've shown is the more diverse your diet, the mm -hmm. more diverse plants and fruits and good quality meat you eat, the greater species of bacteria you have inside you. So anyone who's got a greater species volume it means it's like having multiple ways to get paid in a dental office. If all you get paid in dental office is by Venmo and you just did six crowns on me, guess what? I can't pay you. It's like having multiple ways to get paid. Venmo, uh, uh, Amex, Discover, Enroute, Visa, MasterCard. So the more species of bacteria you, have in, you and I have inside us, the healthier we are. So um, up to 20,000 species. So again, it's one thing to understand the science. It's another, I think, is always the application. Like a lot of us know a lot of cool stuff but how can I apply it? So when every time I say a scientific finding, I try and say how people can apply it. So the more variety of uh, vegetables and fruit you eat, the more variety of bacteria you have, because they will you'll, you'll entice more varieties um, into your body and make them happy, so they flourish. And a key part of that is uh, they make the biome, the bacteria, they have a direct impact in making 40% of the circulating metabolites in our body. So 40% of the stuff that circulates here in my body is powerfully implicated and directly influenced by the bacteria. And that's why you starve them, brain fog, uh, cravings, chronic disease, inflammation, accelerated aging. And people are pulling their hair out, trying to take pills and, you know, do I, do I wear orange glasses? No, eat a salad. Uh, can I get mm. it in a pill? Eat some broccoli. Right. Can I put it in my shake? Eat it the way you can. No cave. We think of we've been eating 
uh, uh, salad, if you want to talk about salad, in its whole form from for three, four, you know, little Lucy, where she was four feet tall, 60 pounds, fell out of a tree. They, they only found 40 of her bones, but the anthropologists think she actually died from falling out of a tree. But she ate all her food raw. There was no, there was no fire back then. Mm. So they didn't know blender. So anytime we eat food away from its natural state, our bacteria go like, what the hell is that? What am I dealing with? It makes it more confusing for them to eat. So, and again, I'm just trying to make it easy for listeners or viewers to take the takeaway points. So, you know, look, look at them already. Um, eat vegetables, they're good for you. A variety is really good for you. Um, half of, um, uh, most of dentists are starving their bacteria of fiber. So they could have, you know, an itero, they can have a greater hygienist, they can have a beautiful office, but if they're starving their bacteria of fiber, they will have lack of mental clarity. They won't sleep well. They will age quicker. They'll have to retire quicker due to degenerative disease. So eating salad can literally help a dentist work another 10 years. And if the average salary is 300,000, that's $3 million for having an extra romaine lettuce and olive oil and balsamic vinegar every day. Like, so I know I, I try to reduce it to the ridiculous, but that's, that's, that's an insane selling feature to have a salad every day. So it sounds like you're you're not really pro probiotic. Um, I, I, I take some. So a lot of jet lag. What's, this is um, Sean okay. Stevenson wrote a book called um, um, Sleep Smarter, 21 Strategies to Sleep Smarter. Um, he said that um, in the journal Cell, they actually showed that a lot of jet lag, that feeling of brain fog, like if, are you in the Eastern time zone, Alex? Yes, sir. You, so if you went to Maui, which is five hours, five time zones away, it, you could, you, you and I, you know, we, we, could, we could travel there, but as you and I get there, like we're under fog, we feel stiff, we feel achy, we feel bloated. It, it's not because our, you know, our Breitling, our Rolexes are not on a telling time. It's the fact that our biome is going, why are you going to the bathroom at two o'clock in the morning? You poop at seven. Oh, so, interesting. Um, Probiotics help placate your bacteria to make them get back on track. A few, there's a few other ways to get back on track for jet lag, but I double up on a probiotic when I'm traveling. So do you take a probiotic I, maintenance every day? Um, I skip all the time. It's, even in, you know, doctors talk, have, you know, talk about patients having a drug holiday, right? You take a, you could take a bisphosphonate medication for a bone density for years. And all of a sudden doctor says, Hey, go off it. So I it's see. called a drug holiday. So I, I talk about a drug holiday with my supplements. So, Every now and then, I stop taking them. Like, oh, cool. Yeah, because if you live a life in balance, it's not life or death to take vitamin D drops. It's not life or death. And what they say, vitamin. they're supplements. They're meant to supplement what right. you're currently doing. It doesn't mean that they become the replacement source of, so you're saying go close to source. And I, and I love what you're talking about is understanding our evolutionary biology and what's tough with today's society, there could be a whole nother podcast, but just how, you know, social media and a lot of things that we have, we have not been designed to handle some of these uh, inputs. And even the way we work and sitting, we haven't been built for that. So yeah. we have to try to honor our evolutionary biology to, to be able to be more productive uh, and, and so on. Like you said, sunlight, water, uh, fiber, these are all some of the basic stuff you need. And I see you're exactly right, Alex. And, and I think a lot of experts online, we, they argue over fringe, obscure points, mm. you know, and that's how you differentiate yourself. Hey, I, I say bulletproof coffee and you say you should put uh, ghee in it. Oh, I say you should put cream in it. I say you should drink it black. I say it should be organic. And they argue over these points. But the experts, what they have shown in this epic study of um, seven countries over three years, a uh, million people, they showed dr drinking coffee every day, lowers the chance of heart disease and increases life expectancy. And then the expert starts arguing over what kind of coffee. Um, all coffee is good, except now, dessert is coffee. It, is it coffee or is it the caffeine that's uh, helpful? It's the bean. It's, it's the bean. The bean has fiber and it has oh. polyphenols. So the bean okay. has fiber and polyphenols. Even decaf coffee has, polyphi has polyphenols, which are antioxidants. Interesting. Makes, syrup, makes your biome happy. So let me and let me clarify this here. Yeah. This, is, this is very interesting. So... And again, you got to see what about it. Um, like, all right, so you're saying in the morning have some, even if it's decaf, it's still going to give you the effect you're looking for? Uh, decaf, for still, but actually decaf coffee has is a, is a kind of a chlorination process. Right. It takes uh, the caffeine out and it never gets down to zero. It just reduces it oftentimes by 50%. So you're still okay. getting it. Right. But um, so 
and again, there's a whole new take on this coffee first thing in the morning. If you're not sure, you know Andrew Huberman. Uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist out of Stanford. Um, mm -hmm. new, now, neuroscientists say in the morning, our bodies naturally get a spurt of adrenaline and our liver Cortisol. gives us yeah. a spurt of glucose. So, and you got to think, if you look at evolution biology, anthropology, millions of years, if, it came, if you and I needed coffee first thing in the morning, we'd have no ancestors. We'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so nature provides us with a little bit of liver, uh, sorry, glucose out of our liver in the morning and a little bit of adrenaline and a natural rise in cortisol. So if an evading tribe came into our, you're my cave, we could fight them and run. We wouldn't say, hey, I'm nothing without my coffee. So this whole idea of being nothing without your coffee, you're going against millions of years right. of human evolution that has programmed us to first in the morning, we naturally get a spike in glucose from our liver and we naturally get a adrenaline and cortisol that's why you can work out on an empty stomach. You know, so these people, if I could work out for an hour on an empty stomach, how come people can't go to their car without a big and, jug Well, of that's coffee? why it's so difficult to lose weight, easy to gain weight, because our body is designed, because we have such rich food, we never had rich food evolutionary, yeah. that when our body sees it, it is gonna store whatever energy we're not using because it assumes we will starve. So it is fighting, it's designed to fight starvation, our body essentially. Yeah. Well, and again, there's a guy named Azarinsky, and mm -hmm. he said, everything is understandable if you look at it in terms of evolution, which none yeah. of us like to go to. We're talking about AI, talking about digital, <laughs> Bitcoin, Coinbase. I'm thinking, you know, that whole thing of scarcity and abundance, that's what makes your, your my amygdala. The amygdala is yep. their dinosaur, a reptilian part of your my brain that when Fight we see flight. a buffet, you, you could have a net worth of $10 million dollars if you saw free food at my party, your brain would go. Meanwhile, yeah, you can have all the food I'll, you want. I'll tell you something funny. Speaking of this, so I can afford. All right, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you where the situation happened. My refrigerator, the condenser broke. We're getting a okay. new refrigerator, and I went to save all my pre-made meals, and they defrosted overnight. Okay, and I put them in the different freezer, and then yesterday I ate one, and I'm okay. I'm okay, but I was nervous. But theoretically, you should throw everything out that was kind of defrosted, maybe. But maybe what, what was it worth? What was it worth really? Like at what? Two hundred bucks? Know. Yeah, exactly. But imagine, I, you, imagine Salmonella could put you could put you out for four weeks. I, I understand that, but it's yeah. that's the point. It's amazing that I could afford a lot of those meals, and I'm yeah. like, and I'm still going to eat them. <laughs> so, and that's that part of that's your Freddie uh, Flintstone that, brain said food right. is good. Uh, don't throw out food. But that's what I realized that, that is. I honor that part of me that you can't, what does it say? Like something about you can take the what out of the dog, but the, whatever, it's still gonna be there. That tendency we have. Now let me ask you, clarify with me the, the, the application because I'm interested about this coffee thing. So I've heard as well, you don't wanna take, well, the caffeine aspect of it too early. That there's, there's certain times yeah. and like, I know for example, like before you, at about three o'clock, I start to like, you know, the, the rhythm goes down. Like uh, caffeine tea is helpful, you know, at that point. Um, but you're saying, which is I never heard before, I'm always learning with, with you, uh, Uchi, is that the coffee, it's not just the caffeine. You're saying it's the other elements of the coffee that help you biologically, right? So, um, uh, so A, clarify that, and B, when's the best time to take it? Okay, so new, new neuroscience over the last year said wait an hour to two hours to have it because okay. otherwise you're hijacking your natural rhythm. I and see. Uh, another gentleman, another neuroscientist out of Stanford says, um, we stack dopamine too much. It's just like, so in the morning, if your body gives you adrenaline, cortisol and glucose, and now you throw a grande latte in, your body's going, hey, I was fine on my own. Why are you plussing me? It's like, and they've said, we shouldn't stack too many good things on top of each other every day. Mm, like you, right. you lose, it's the law of familiarity. Uh, well, there's also the, the, a, a psychological Well, there, there's a video, the one that I sent you called the happiness set point uh, okay. that I, I just went out a, a few weeks ago that I put on the podcast as well. And in the studies, there's this concept called hedonic adaptation. Have you okay. heard of it? I've heard of uh, hedonism, so, but I, well, I don't know. Well, it's not even, hedi well, hedi is, well, I don't know if it comes from the same word, but hedonic adaptation means that we will adapt to our circumstances. So yeah. if we, like you say, paraplegics, 
uh, it's terrible what happens. After a few years, they adjust back to their happiness set point, yeah. what genetically yeah. they're program, programmed to do. If we get millions and millions of dollars win the lottery, we will be really happy, but soon we will adapt and we will come mm -hmm. back to our set point. 50% of our set point is genetics, only 10% yeah. is our circumstances. So more mm -hmm. money will only make you 10% happier. 40%, yeah. according to research, we can control based on mindfulness activities and, and so on. Being grateful, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So my point, the point is, is that from a, from a biological perspective, our body, our perception, and our neurotransmitters will adapt. So if you keep flooding yourself with dopamine, those receptors will start to kind of weak, they'll, they'll adjust so there's too much in the system. So that's what I'm yep. hearing is that if you do too much of good thing, it will no longer feel like a good thing. That's well, it's adaptation. Like, it's like Andrew Tate with his five Bugattis. Bugatti is like a $3 million car. <laughs> and he get three miles to a gallon. Right. So, um, hey, I'd be happy with a Jag or, uh, or uh, the brand new Corvette. But all of a sudden, if I have seven, I'm not seven times as happy. That's right. If I got a Bugatti for three, three million, I'm not 300 times as happy. And this is what we were I talking about earlier. More, more. Is sorry, more. That's what you said earlier. Moderation is your, your mantra because too much isn't gonna mean better. More is not better. Well, you can't have just hills. You know, you need the valleys. Right. Just like they said, what makes cocaine and meth so addictive is that it ramps up dopamine to 10,000 times within five seconds. And then the low, you go low and it stays low until you do it again. It goes lower than it was before and it flattens out even after. So that's why, um, I can get really happy just looking at past pictures of my kids growing up. Hmm. I can get, I can close my eyes and think of my first uh, keynote in Colorado in 2019 hmm. and look at 2,000 people. And my, and my, I can get, I can fill my body with endorphins. A Bugatti is not going to take me, make me 5,000 times happier. Yep. So you, that's why they said you can hack your your biome. Uh, sorry, you can hack your hormonal system and physiology to spend more time happier. Um, and a lot of really wealthy people who have a lot of nice things enjoy watching others play with their things more than they like having them. So true. So a lot of really wealthy people only enjoy their house when it's full of guests. When they're on their own, That's they're thinking, true. man, I need a vodka and water. But you <laughs> fill it with 100 people playing with their unicorn in their pool and driving a Bugatti and doing selfies beside their Ferrari and their ice sculpture. And they're all, they're all excited, but put them alone. The, unha the, the unhappiest rich guy on the street, you know. You know, you're we're having so much fun here. I, I <laughs> I'm pulling you off in all these tangents, and it's just like it's just, it's a pleasure. So back to I'll bring the listeners back to microbiome. What diseases are based on microbiome, and how can we get healthier? Yeah, this is where it starts getting pretty cool because almost um all of the modern degenerative diseases have an inflammatory component mm. or inflammation. Out of control inflammation plays a key part. Arthritis, pancreatitis hepatitis, diabetes, um, obesity, Alzheimer's is a lifetime of chronic inflammation is what David Perlmutter said out of Florida, psychiatrist, um, uh, periodontitis, gingivitis, cardiovascular disease is an inflammatory component, cancer hijacks your inflammatory system and uses inflammation at, at every step of its way to, for metastasis by hijacking your inflammation. So um, one way to, to get your biome to douse the flames inflammation is to eat more vegetables because mm -hmm. when your biome, these billion year old single cell organisms without a brain, without any post-grad studies, they've never been to Coist, they've never been to LVI or Panky. All they want is they want to ferment fiber. And when they ferment fiber, they make one of the most anti-inflammatory components in the body, which is short chain fatty acids, SCFAs. You and I both have them. But if you had more than me, you can douse the flames easier. So if there's a fire in, on, in the room behind you, you'd have a bucket of 10 gallons of water. But if I hated vegetables, if I ate a lot of boxed and canned food, if I drank a lot, guess what? I would go to my fire and I would spit out of it and no water would come out. So basically the biome ferments fiber and it causes a huge way to douse the flames because SCFAs, which is the byproduct of fermentation of the from the bacteria, douses the flames of inflammation. So anyone that's eating uh, vegetables every day, a salad, an avocado, two apples, two cups of coffee at four grams each, you're eating for a woman 25 grams and a man 35 grams a day. You have two big buckets of water. Inflammation is, has nowhere in your body. I had my body scanned this morning. I had a bio scan. I had some fascia work. And the therapist said, ooch, 
nothing in your body is tight. She goes, uh, she goes, she moved my shoulder. She goes, that's nothing tight. She went around. She goes, I can tell you're hydrated. And she goes, your joints, there's no clicking. And, and I'm thinking like, this is a, an objective opinion. I didn't tell her what I was doing. So it's incredible how it plays out. Like just, if you tell, if you told every dentist in America, all 200,000, that you could have unsticky joints, your joints would move without clicking and locking and you'd be pain-free by eating an avocado and an apple and having some, some dark roast Arabica bean coffee. They'd go like, you know, wow, give me that, you know? And I could actually help them live another 10 years, which I wouldn't mind uh, a percentage of that because another 10 years of being a dentist is $3 million. So I could almost help every dentist who's listening or hygienist that matter. <laughs> uh, $3 million, give me 10% to give you another decade simply by following some of the advice that you and me, that you're inspiring me to share. Oh, it's beautiful. So I, my last question was, was what do dentists need to know about the gut? And I, I think you kind of uh, laid that out, but do you want to kind of summarize what from our listeners, what a dentist need to know uh, for about the gut? Okay, so, so very basic. Um, a lot of people research before they go into an office. A lot of research, a lot of people go research. So if you have an emergency patient coming into a high-tech office, Itero, they have all the, all the beautiful digital pan, they got the CAD CAM unit, they got the CIRAC, zzz, zzz, zzz. patient comes in with their emergency. Before they, people go into a dentist, they look up abscess, they look up swelling, and they look up, the dentist might give you an antibiotic. And then they look up, uh, you know, the mayo.com or WebMD, and it says, if you get an antibiotic, you might want to take a probiotic. So they look up probiotics and antibiotics. So they come into this high-tech office, you know, $10 million worth of beautiful stained glass and all this beautiful, and they ask the doctor, hey, uh, you're probably going to be an antibiotic, right? Oh, yeah, because I don't have time. I fit you in. I'm just going to put you on 10 days of moxicillin. And if this new patient says, well, I need a probiotic. And if the, and the dentist goes, ah, you don't need them. The new research says you don't need them. Then the patient goes, wow, WebCam, WebMD, Mayo Clinic, and Dr. Axe, and a whole bunch of other websites talk about the value of a probiotic. Not that it works a miracle. It just helps to stabilize the biome, especially in vulnerable people, which is women and older women. So pseudomembrous colitis is a crazy illness. So talk about um, C. difficile overgrowth. So you, you have 10 days of moxicillin, or if someone's shopping around for dentists and they're going for different dentists trying to fix what they fix, and they have penicillin, amoxicillin, biaxin, and, and if they're older, and if they're not eating fiber, and if they're a shift worker, and if they have stress in their life and financial stress, now they have a vulnerable GI tract. So that last dose of antibiotics could put my system into disarray and now I'm having bloody diarrhea, bloating. And the minute you have bloody diarrhea, bloating, now your biome is mad. These biome have been on the planet for 5 billion years. Guess what? You make the biome mad, brain fog, uh, digestive upset, which means poor absorption of nutrients. And it could set you on a long spiral path for a year into depression. So um, dentists need to learn more about the biome. So when patients ask questions, they don't blow it off. You know, my medical doctor, I love what my medical doctor, she goes, Uchi, I know you've just read articles, so tell me what you, you know first before she answers the question. So dentists should ask a patient when they ask about probiotics, tell me what you know about probiotics. And they said, oh, my husband's a chiropractor or my wife's a chiropractor. We, and then, then you went, ooh, I was so lucky I didn't blow it off because I'd come across like an idiot blowing off a subject which I know nothing about. They're better off saying, I know nothing about it, but I'm open to hearing what you want to know. Now you seem like an enlightened dentist with your iTero and your digital pan. So you need to read or attend my wellness courses to yeah. learn oh, more yes. about the to learn more, more about the vocabulary. Well, let, let's put that in here. Let's let's talk about that. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes as well that we have a few resources. Dr. Uchi uh, and you're also with Grace Kim. You're hosting three day retreat, uh, yeah. fit fit body, calm mind, inspire practice. We yeah. have that. Yeah. We have say hello to you at the next conference. You also have direct messages. You love going. Now, how do we do the direct messages? How will they direct message you? Um, on Instagram, I'm huge on Instagram, okay. Twitter. I answer all my own. I haven't farmed it out. I love, I love hearing direct feedback as, as you know, people farm out the shows media, media, maybe, you know, Bill Dorfman does, or, you know, Dwayne, the rock Johnson does, but I jump on and I like to answer questions. It gives, it puts my finger on the pulse of what people want to know. I might say, here's what I know. And then people ask me questions about something I didn't even touch on. Or I assume everyone knows what I know. And I realize now, is there a I web, I'm sorry, um, is Mm -hmm. Instagram, right. uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm, I'm active on Facebook, but all right. So we'll put your, we'll put your inter, in, we'll put your Instagram link. Uh, I'm do you, on Twitter. you have a, and Twitter. What about web, you have a website? 
Um, I do. It's uh, DrUchi.com. So Dr. D-R-U-C-H-E.com. Okay. Okay. And I think you even have my phone number on it. So, so. I, I'm not going to give everybody out that the be, you know, you're, listen, don't do that with my audience. They will, uh, they will bug you and call you and text you. They're, they're big learners and all that, but they can direct message you on Instagram. They have your website, all these great things. Dr. Uchi, thanks so much for being on the, on the podcast. And remember everyone to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And of course, we're, we then publish it to all the other channels. We're even on TikTok too. Get episodes as they are released, share with your friends. And until next time, go out there and be an all-star. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Dental All-Stars. Visit us online at allstardentalacademy.com.